My name is Mike Lavalley. I'm the executive director for the Chippewa Watershed Conservancy. Bundy Hill is one of our 23 preserves. They're all accessible to the public. You can come out here anytime you want. We have a nice loop trail here, goes up to the summit of Bundy Hill. Bundy yes, Hill is the highest point in Isabella County. It's actually 500 feet higher than the city of Mount Pleasant. Right now we're at right around 1100 feet above sea level. So the summit's still another 170 feet up which if you're a flatlander from central Michigan like me, that seems like a big deal. <laughs> you know? We picked a great day to do this. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. It's a little bit chilly, but the leaves are like right at peak color. Unfortunately, most That's of them it. are falling on the ground. You got it. <laughs> if we don't make it to the top on the mushroom hunt, I highly recommend you go up there today. And there's, the summit up there is marked by a U.S. Um, geological survey marker. It tells you the elevation. But then there's a cross trail called the Ridge Trail. And on that Ridge Trail, there is a clear view off toward the northeast that you can see for several miles. And with today, the colors, it should just be absolutely gorgeous. But I think this is going to be your last opportunity to really see those because it's supposed to rain and snow later in the week. So if you want to see the colors, today's the day to do it. I'm going to hand it over to Sister Marie. She's our hunt leader today. Right, and I represent the Michigan Mushroom Hunters Club as well as the CWC because I'm members of both. We're going to see what kind of fall mushrooms we have. I do have some handouts here. So we have uh, about 250 edible species, 300 maybe in Michigan, but they don't taste good necessarily. It's just non-toxic would be a better word. And edible has all kinds of meanings because what I eat, you may not eat, and what you eat, I may not be able to. And maybe the ground is sprayed with Roundup or chemicals where they grew. There's just all the variables. So most authors nowadays, the new ones, do not mention edibility in their books because of liability. Now, on the bottom of the page, I mentioned some of the most dangerous species, and I wish you had the colored ones. I only had a couple of them. We have the white one called the Amanita, or the Death Angel, Amanita verosa, or Bisporus. There's several of those. Two cubic centimeters, and in three days, you could be gone unless there's a liver transplant for you. I mean, it's not a joking matter at all. Dogs can die from it. You gotta watch toddlers grabbing everything and sticking it in their mouth, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and below that on there, this is a species called Gallerina. And in this area of Michigan, they're either kind of reddish on top or they're kind of a autumn color, nice golden brown and they're a look-alike, they have the same amatoxin as this. They're very, they're rare, I hardly ever find them. Last ones I found were last year, way down by uh, the soup kitchen and the pavilion and that little park in Mount Pleasant. And they're not there this year. They weren't there the year before. They grow on wood and they're small. What I've seen in this county, they're this tall and maybe the cap is about two inches, so. Uh, I know this is not as good as having the thing to show you, but we have no choice right here. Anyway, I haven't found a gallerina in a year or two, so. But the whites grow a lot under pines. I found uh, one that could have been a white uh, yesterday or the day before, so they're still around. The, but they're easy to see. That's why we say for beginners, do not bother with white mushrooms unless you have somebody with you that really knows how to identify them. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise you'll be searching for a liver transplant mm -hmm. or if you catch it right away, you take the stuff that makes you emit <laughs> bad things in your stomach, right? You head for the bathroom. <laughs> okay, uh, that's activated charcoal. Uh, the vets use Similarin for the dogs and that, that's a good one too to um, Get rid of it. That's about the only way you can get over this. The other picture, uh, they grow all over Mount Pleasant, a uh, green spored polypore. They should be done fruiting now. They are, they look like something oh, would be so good to eat. They're white though, see another white one. 
they start turning kind of a beige gray green underneath. You will experience about 24 hours to 48 hours of misery, okay? You won't die, but you will wish you were dead. I ate a piece of one by mistake when I was studying in Virginia. I can tell you all the details, okay? It was awful. <laughs> This is the mushroom that sends the most people in Michigan to the ER. I got a call 1.30 in the morning because I'm on the poison control center. I could hear the lady throwing up. They brought me the mushroom and I identified it. Then they took the book so they all could study it. <laughs> is it confused with another edible, or not edible, but another mushroom that people Oh yeah, eat? it's called a parasol. Okay. All you gotta do is look at the bottom though. And they're big, they can grow foot and they usually grow in a circle or a portion of a circle. I could point out half a dozen places in Mount Pleasant where they grew, and I found two places this year. You know, they aren't choosy. They're public land or private land right on your lawn. They grew kitty corner on, uh, uh, from me two years ago, and for two years they've grown kitty corner from Ganyard School. So I knocked on the door so the lady would get rid of them so the kids wouldn't get over there and try something, you know. And then the bottom one is um, a jack-o'-lantern. Oh, that's fun for Halloween. If you find a jack-o'-lantern, don't eat it. It'll make you ill. It's not deadly, okay? It'll make you ill, but it glows in the dark. It's really fun for kids. We have about a dozen kinds of mushrooms in Michigan that glow in the dark, but this is the biggest and the most abundant kind. I mean, it grows big. Some people mistake this for what you call the well-known honey mushroom. Has everybody got gear to pick in? Do you have a paper sack or basket? Plastic bag. Plastic bag is iffy. For the plastic bag, you, you could get away with picking as soon as you got it out of the bag when we were looking at it and you took it home because it will decay very fast in a plastic bag but probably not in an hour, especially in being so cold. Okay, and there's two ways to pick. One is for a specimen to identify, and we're going to work probably largely on identification of specimens, and the other is for the pot, for cooking. So if you do a specimen, you want the bottom of the mushroom. Like that picture, if you look at that white, long-stemmed poisonous mushroom, there's a ball at the bottom. It's very important to identify. I think last time I was here, there's a, it's called Calibia raticata, and uh, it's a fun mushroom. I really like it, and I, I, I eat that one. It grows on a long stem, and the cap is uh, like about my hand, you know, round. And, uh, but you dig down, and you see a root system almost as long as the stem, and the stem can be a foot. And it's narrow, and it kind of snaps. This is all identification thing. See, so you want to see how it grows underneath. I have a list here. I'm up to 42 different kinds of mushrooms that uh, I have found on the hunts I've been on. And I think um, these are mostly what you call edible kinds. I've worded it very carefully now. <laughs> Most people can eat these. Okay, it's just a, kind of an interest thing for me, how many different kinds of species we have in the central Michigan area. Then you have the Ten Commandments of Eating Wild Mushrooms by Moses Mycophagus. Now, mycophagy is a fancy word meaning cooking and eating mushrooms. So we have a national committee of mycophagy, and they prepare a nice little tasting bar. The specimens come in the morning, the leftovers are edibles, and they cook them, and you take your plate, and they they got the ingredients, and they put this here and this here. It's kind of fun, mycophagy. <laughs> if you'd like to look in the flatter part here, the History Trail has a very interesting history of the area. And that's done by one of our preserved stewards. Uh, he's really gotten into it. It's, it's fun. We got Halls Lake. Well, there was a Mr. Hall. And he built an old state road, and there's a lot of nice history. And uh, it was really an integrated community. Lots of good stuff. And then this is what takes you down to an oil field from which then you get the first trail going up the hill. We have a specimen table. So when you come, we want specimens to identify. That's part of the learning experience on this. 
and I've got paper plates and I have some trays from cardboard boxes and I will try and sort. But we'll see how many different specimens we have. Uh, two weeks ago at Halls Lake we got 70 and uh, a week before that we got 70 at Deerfield Park. So there has been an abundance out and I don't know if it's gone down. We have more rains and everything. Look on the dead logs. Look at the base of trees, especially oak trees. Oh, I'd say this is a honey mushroom. Huh. Armillaria, Malia. Oh, we got some turkey tails here. Some people call the whole genera turkey tail. But uh, Trimedes versicolor is the kind that is used for medicine and that sort of thing. What I found is you look at this and you look and see what color it is underneath because turkey tails do vary a lot in color. Uh, it's kind of oldish. It's kind of hard to tell what color originally. See, this looks more like a turkey's tail. You know, the brown color and everything? It's definitely cream colored, see? The others that are not true turkey tails uh, will be brown, sometimes purple, sometimes green underneath. But this nice creamy color is a big clue for this. And some people use these like chewing gum in the woods. <laughs> they do, I've read about it. The kind of example that shows how it's named. See, that's a turkey tail right there. I'd say this is pretty ripe for picking and everything. This is a good, good oh, really? log full. They're not, they don't get any bigger than this? Correct, correct. That's the size. This is really good for immunity, the turkey Yes, tail. yes. Yeah, you just pick them off and then you dry them. You can make tea or you can make tinctures. There's books on medicinal mushrooms, see, and then you can figure out the recipes of what to do with that. Because there's a cold extraction and a hot extraction and a water one and an alcohol one extractions. For the ones foraging in Michigan, getting the license, they have to know the identification of 20 Michigan mushrooms and pass a test, okay. which uh, we who wrote about the mushrooms made up. So it's true and false and fill in the blank and everything you can imagine. That would be great. <laughs> and then you can sell mushrooms in Michigan. You get the license for five years. See, it's growing and Leaves, leafy matter. Got a fuzzy stem. See all those little clues? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not open all the way. Right. It's got split gills, not fine gills though either. Mm -hmm. Then we'd have to cut the whole thing in half this way. Or we, what we do is take the stem out and make a spore print. Wow. Oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah. Kind of neat. Huh? Yeah. Take it on its. Take yeah, it'd be nice if we can keep it on like there. A, it's like it's a mobile home. Old, old, old. See, that's hard to tell. That's not a hen. See, you can see caps right away. And a brown underneath, not a rust. Where's that sunshine? What would, what would, what would rust mean? That's a cortinarius. All quartz have rusty spores. And when they're older, they're harder to identify. And unless you can take a microscope and get spores and okay. find them, but to make a spore print, this is so mature, it's probably dropped most of the spores okay. already. This is uh, probably a jelly fungi, jelly. You want me to get this one? Sure. Gee, we're going to come back with the most kinds of mushrooms, I betcha. Oh, old puffball? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that woodier? Woodier. Woodier. That's very young. Young. You can buy them at Chinese Oh, that's yeah. interesting. White underneath almost looks like a fuzzy. This well, might so be a false puffball. Puff Let's wait till we go back and cut it in half. If we cut it in half now, it'll lose the parts. It. It's got the splash of red. Capnoides are brick caps. That's okay. the um, folk name around here, brick caps. And Dr. Alexander Smith, who is picking mushrooms in heaven right now, uh, he has a book. He and his daughter... Um, can't think of her name now. His wife was Helen. She also published too in mycology. But a long, narrow book, and it's available used in bookstores all over the place. Cheap. <laughs> mm. It's all Michigan mushrooms. The latest ones are in color, but the cover is all brick caps. It's okay. beautifully done. It's a close up of the brick caps. That's all you see. Kind of a reddish on mm. all over the cover of the book. It's, nice it's worth color. even looking nice at it. Paper. Yeah, yeah, you could. You can make wallpaper, capnoides. Like I said, capnoides is not the recent biological name, according to DNA change. 
Honey's honey's, right? Cool. So when you look at that, how do you know it's a honey? When you first look at it, you know it's a honey. I know it is because oh, of the way it looks. A I, little yellow yeah. down at the base. And, and then the, the, the size of it and the color. And I, I'm so shade. used to looking yeah. at it, I just mm -hmm. know it is. Yeah. That's the trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call that experience, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Can we try this? Because I have, I have done mushrooms. My dad started taking me when I was around five. Because wow, honey is amazing. honey's an edible mushroom. For most people. See, the others were tough, and this is uh, kind of squishy-like. Oh, I forgot that. There's a oh, a whole branch of mycology just with that kind. Oh, it looks like you got a blue it. Turn it over. Blue it. Yep. Yeah. You got the bottom. And the kind of purplish. B L E. It, it gets really purple though. They're easy to spot, usually right next to a trail. Okay. It was growing kind of like... Yeah, it was like side by side. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then this one was a little tangled with uh, some grass. Little split gills, narrow gills. They're long. Some are tiny. Being split like that, that's water. That makes them do that. Wow. Should give a prize to the one who found the biggest one, huh? They're really pretty. They were all over. It's off of wood. It's a, it's a type of lichen. Yeah. That could be the death angel, or uh, it's probably the not. Doesn't have a ball. Doesn't have the little veil. It's too fat. Mm. We'll put the kind that uh, I have eaten, like over here. Oh, here's a gypsy, yeah. a gypsy. See the kind of a splash of a silver in the middle? See it right there? Mm -hmm. And then the way the gills connect, they're not sloped, they don't come to the stem, they go in a little bit. Mm -hmm. See, this is one of my favorites. Gypsy. <laughs> yeah, and of course it's got a botanical name which has changed also. <laughs> so far, just one gypsy. Yeah, see, that's not. See the difference in the color? Okay. All right, let's keep going. Sort. That's an oldie. That's real hard to identify because it's so old. See how that goes like a cone compared to others is just flat. Polypore. Mm -hmm. Polypore. Giant magnifying that lens. talks that about all? the underside. Here, can you show her? Here's our first bolete tubes. Mm -hmm. Woo, she gets a prize, the first bolete. Those are <laughs> generally considered edible. Well, Dr. Alexander Smith, I have his book, This Fat, black and white from the 40s and 50s of different boletes of Michigan. That thick of different kinds. You got it? Oh. There it is, the I death angel. Oh, wow. boy, you found a lot of good ones. Wow. See the big ball? And oh. here's the cap. Oh. This Looks is like the a one. Barbell. Yeah. A little barbell. Yeah, it does. Look at the barbell. Oh, here. This is called a Havelka. Looks like a saddle. See? And this grows along with the morels also. Some of them are more brownish. I believe this has some toxins in it too. Now I do know what these are, hygrophorus. How many species could we expect to find in these woods? Well, I can just tell you what we found the last couple weeks and Halls Lake across 
M20, and also at Deerfield we found 70. And also I went up to Sini, it was Labor Day weekend. I did a training session there. Um, and then we went out in the woods, 10 of us, smaller than this group. And they've got trails and all over, because that's a big, big wildlife center. We found 125 different kinds. 125 in one hour. Same thing as here. And we had a pavilion and we had tables full. <laughs> they, all, they all brought them. I talked to them for two hours in the morning with a PowerPoint. We had lunch and then we went out. So they had a little training so they knew what to look for. See how sticky that is? And that's a typical of a swaylus. They grow a lot under pines. For something like this where I know the possibility is going to be a burning sensation or very acrid, uh, you know, I can be more prepared with water. But in, just in general, I avoid all the pink and red ones, but I like the green ones and I like the brown ones. I, when I fry them up, they're like nuts. And this is one where you have to get there first because the squirrels and everybody else loves these. And they will start chawing on them and the worms get in there. You gotta get there first. <laughs> it's an artist conch. Because if you touch this even with your finger, you'll get a fingerprint on here. Some artists uh, draw on this. I've even seen uh, souvenir shops in Michigan. I don't think lately, but like with a little lamp by it or... But the artist has drawn something really pretty. Something, not Ganoderma apilatum, that's the name of it. But uh, it's kind of old too here. Hygrophorus. And we've got a jelly fungi, this one right here. See, there's, so, there's a Clitosopy family and there's something, there's a couple different families here. And the Apilatum, 22. 26. Oh, clubfoot, see? There's your clatosopy. That's the one I've been eating. Only I haven't found it in years or done anything with it in years. We have here approximately 70 different kinds of mushrooms. If you look over here, and on this half of the table, I tried to put the ones that are considered edible by a number of people. As Dr. Alexander Smith says, oh, this is some kind of mushroom. Some people will eat some of this mushroom some of the time. <laughs> but not, you know, again, edibility versus liability when you're teaching. Okay, and we have named 25 different kinds of mushrooms. That doesn't mean they're edible, uh, again, like I said. We have three kinds of pawpaws here. Look, they're smoking. You touch them. And here's a bigger version. It's the spores coming out. We have a big bluet here. We have some kind of a tube underneath mushroom, a swalus. And here's one artist-like. Somebody drew a face on it already. Ganoderma epilatum. This is a pretty colored one. Sometimes a deep orange. It's a bodyus. It's there for the looks only. You got that? Okay. And then uh, I almost got the biggest mushroom, me and who was with me. There we go, over there. But I don't know the name of that. It would take hours of work. Then we've got about three kinds of the honey mushrooms here. Okay. Then we found Lucaria lacata. Here is turkey tails used for medicinal purposes mostly. Here's Lucaria lacata. I remember eating those. My father always had, uh, had us eat them. Two kinds of coral mushroom. And this is what we call the death angel. And if you notice, it's starting to open up already since we put it on the table. Can you see that? Yeah, you can start seeing the underside. Uh, again, three cubic centimeters of this could destroy your liver in three days. These are capnoides, or called brick caps, because see that beautiful brick color? And it's on Dr. Alexander Smith's book. And he's currently hunting mushrooms in heaven. So the book is available real cheap for used bookstores. Here is the cheesecake mushroom. Mm -hmm. uh, now Phil Tadeshi knows the technical name of this, and it's sort of has the texture of cheesecake, 
It's a polypore, it has little pores underneath. And here we have a hygrophorus, they're pretty kind of see-through, bright colored. Uh, some of them are green, some are bright red. We have the yellow and the kind of orange here. Over here we have a whole group of white ones. Um, if this is the time of year when you get lots of big fat white ones. Uh, they're not the death angel type, but nobody really eats them, which indicates that you might uh, have a hospital trip or not feel good for a while. And here we have a quart, and I don't know if you can see, this is a rust-colored spore. And the spores that drop down from the gills when these get older. So leave those alone. That's the message on those. And over here we have some of what you call the LBMs. These beautiful little tiny mushrooms of which you probably could find a hundred if you looked in the woods today real close. And again, they're pretty good for scientific studies, especially if somebody wants tenure and promotion in a university, they can write a paper about these. And then again, more white ones, more unknown kinds here. In Michigan, we have about 350 or 250 to 300 edibles, but maybe a thousand kinds of fungi. That is year round. And here we are in the fall. So we have a grand total here of 70 species that we found. Yeah, it was between 15 and 20 people hunting for an hour. So we did very good. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.